the show it is. Very exciting guests on today. Two of my friends just got back on a very exciting VIP expedition in Cusco, Peru. And I find it very timely. Every other day we're getting bathed with headlines about things being found in Peru, like the Lost Pyramid City of the Giants found in Peru. That story, actually from four years ago, is recycling. We see a new creature that's just been developed. And of course, Tim and Steve are going to talk about the three-fingered alien. That's what they're calling it. Oh, of course, Gaia, Gaia Gaia.com. There you go. Gee, who do I talk about in my book, Green Gospel? Replacing God with Gaia. But that's a whole other show. It is my pleasure to welcome Steve Quayle and Timothy Alberino to the program today. I'll kick it off to you. First of all, Tim, thank you for coming on the program. You kick things off for us. Well, thanks for having us on, Sheila. Um, yeah, Steve and I just returned from from Peru. We were in Cusco, Peru with a group of people, and uh, L.A. Marsili was there. Anselm P. Ramla was there. It was our True Legends expedition and seminar, and uh, we had a fabulous time. But um, what's interesting is that while we were in Peru and after we got back, Peru keeps showing up in the headlines for a bunch of different reasons. They just found that th- three-fingered uh, mummy that's exploding all over the Internet. Nobody knows what that is yet exactly. Um, I think we're we're a little guarded about it because um, it could be a hoax. That that sort of thing happens a lot, especially in South America, especially after people realize how much money can be involved in purchasing in the purchasing of of, of these these artifacts, these bodies and skeletons. That that might be a complete hoax. So we're guarded about that th- that uh, particular situation. But Peru is certainly centerfold right now. And uh, there's a reason for that. They call Peru the navel of the world. In fact, the Inca called Peru the navel of the world. And the reason why they called it that was because they believed that there was a distinct, powerful connection between the heavens and the earth, uh, what they call an axis mundi, uh, at Peru, specifically in Cusco, and more specifically at Sacsayhuaman. In fact, when we were on our trip uh, in Cusco, Anselm was uh, divulging some of his some of the information that he had gathered through his research. Now, Anselm P. Rambla is a Spanish explorer, renowned Spanish explorer. He is, we, Steve and I always joke about it, because he looks like the Dos Equis guy, the most interesting man in the world. But <laughs> but Sheila, if you get to know this guy, he really is the most interesting man in the world. I mean, he really is. They were going to make a movie about him and all kinds of uh, very interesting uh, stories uh, associated with Anselm P. Ramla. But Anselm did excavations in, in the Sacsayhuaman area, and that's not common. It's very difficult to get permission to do excavations anywhere in Cusco, especially at Sacsayhuaman. But uh, nevertheless, he was able to get the permission. He did excavations there. He also did excavations in the uh, Coricancha, beneath the church of Santo Domingo in Cusco, unprecedented excavations. And in both cases, he uncovered astounding things. And at, at Sacsayhuaman, Anselm did, did, uh, did his investigations and came up with the theory that Sacsayhuaman is in fact, it's not a fortress like uh, the historians will uh, say or the archaeologists say, and it's definitely pre-Inca, there's no question about that, but what Anselm believes that Sacsayhuaman really is, is a stargate, an ancient stargate, in fact, the most powerful and important stargate on the planet. And uh, Steve and I are inclined to believe with that to believe uh, that um, Sacsayhuaman is indeed a stargate. His he, he showed us uh, the the amazing alignments of Sacsayhuaman uh, with all these other locations in Peru. Absolutely mind blowing information uh, that he he talked about during his uh, seminar out there in Cusco. So the idea that Sacsayhuaman is a stargate has never been put forth before. Uh, at least I've never heard. I've never heard anyone postulate that it's a stargate. I've heard all kinds of other things about it. But uh, what, what, what people have to understand about Cusco, the city of Cusco, and, and, and the primary reason why we wanted to go there, and I believe the primary reason why it's called the navel of the world, is because beneath the city of Cusco, specifically beneath Sacsayhuaman, is a vast subterranean world. And there's all kinds of, of tunnels that connect. There's a labyrinth of tunnels right beneath Sacsayhuaman. Not many people know that, but it's, it's, it's actually a matter of history. It's a matter of ancient history. The conquistadors and the chroniclers uh, actually wrote, write about the labyrinth that, that exists beneath Sacsayhuaman. They spoke about it in their chronicles and, and in their various writings. This isn't just a localized labyrinth beneath Cusco. This is the convergence of what's called the Shinkana. 
and it runs all throughout the Andes Mountains. In fact, it goes all the way into the Amazon jungle, and beneath uh, Satsaiwaman is where this labyrinth, these tunnels converge. Some of these labyrinths uh, and caverns are naturally occurring. Uh, they're magma chambers and so forth. Others are artificially devised. In other words, they're, they were built by somebody a long time ago, and in some cases, the walls of these, of these tunnels are lined with megalithic stones. So um, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. The city of Cusco, I believe it is what's called an Axis Mundo. It's a, it's a connection point. Uh, it's a stargate there at Sacsayhuaman, and it is uh, one of the most critical places on the planet, and that is becoming more and more evident as time goes by. I think I'd like to add to something very important, Sheila. The idea of the world's largest stargate we talk about the bottomless pit. We talk, Jesus talked about the gates of hell. We see all the references in the Word of God, but when we were there, it became obvious that with the celestial alignments, everything that is of importance, whether it's a pyramid, whether it's a tunnel system, whether it's a structure system, whatever, is always pretty much lined up with the stars, either the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, Orion, the, the Mighty Hunter, and it all goes back to Nimrod, which all goes back to the Giants, which all goes back to the Fall. Now, here's what's critical, and I think this is something we want everyone to understand. There is, an, and Tim, I'm not going to go into, you know, what's under there. I'm just going to refer to something. By having the conference, and I believe it was God's providence, and I'm saying real providence, that Tim said we need to have a conference and take it to Peru. We didn't know everything that would unfold there. But when Tim was initially talking to Anselm, Anselm made a very important statement. And the statement is, it's time. Now, I didn't know that, and I walked, you know, I walked in on Tim. He was doing editing on uh, Holocaust of Giants, our third DVD, which, by the way, is probably one of the most important historic films you know, put on DVD that people could ever watch. You'll have to watch it to understand why this is important. We're being given, Sheila, the keys to understanding the prophetic fulfillment of history that's unfolding in the headlines. Even today, as we're doing this interview on the London Daily Mail, there's a story about a Peruvian mummy princess that they've been able to forensically rebuild, and again, it's coming from Peru. Now, here's what I'm going to tell people, and you asked me about the uh, three-fingered alien. I think people better be aware that because of the extreme powers that be, and I'm talking the supernatural powers of hell, fallen angels are corporate minions, and I'm not kidding when I share this, that there will be mockumentaries made. Those of us who are out in the field doing documentaries and true historic research, there's going to be stuff that's going to be so smooth that it's going to basically seem like it's true. And then they're going to spring the word, well, this was just all make-believe, kind of like the famous mermaid episode on one of the channels a couple of years ago. So we're reserving opinion on that. But what I will tell you we won't reserve opinion on is what's going on, what will be revealed in Branson, Missouri. And, and we just opened it up for live streaming, okay? And I forgot, and I guess maybe we got so enveloped in the production, the release of Holocaust of Giants, our third film on DVD, that we've got people all over the world. Tim, I don't know that you know this because while we're on the air right now with Sheila, it's coming in. But there are people now in different countries taking the information and translating. I guess we've just been translated into Swedish, the country of Sweden. So, so what's happening is God is giving his warning all over the world. I got an email from Tasmania. So I want people to understand this. The Branson actual seating capacity, I think we're 80 to 85 percent sold out, but we've opened it up to live streaming, which means people can stream it at the time the speakers are speaking, or they can stream in at a later date. And we've got all over now people responding. So, you know, it's on my website, stevequail.com, but that wasn't the original plan. And so I think that, and I, I maybe this sounds almost corny, but I think the lid is not about to be blown off. I believe the lid is blown off. Well, we were at the Corte Concha. One of the things that uh, Anselm P. Rombla and Tim are on record is Anselm was the only guy to be able to go beneath the convent of Santo Domingo, uh, uh, the uh, Corte Concha and actually go into the tunnel system before the powers that be shut him down. 
while we were there, we were filming. We weren't supposed to film, and there were some heavyweight guys there. I mean, when I say heavyweight, I'm talking people with power that were basically telling us to our face. They were lying to us that Father Gamara, the man who was the head prior, this is critical, the prior of the Kori Kancha was not on the grounds. Well, guess what? God arranged that he was on the ground, so we had open lies to try and keep the verification of Anselm being able to reunite with Father Gamara. I'll be posting pictures. Tim is there with him. I'm the guy behind the camera. What a neat guy, too, by the way, you know. This amazing man, and, and he and Anselm are embracing because, again, you understand, they don't acknowledge what we're telling you. The guy that gave permission, who was the head of the Kori Kancha, the man who was the most famous, actually the most interesting guy in the world, the opportunity to have Anselm P. Rambla at Branson, and Tim will be interpreting in real time, because actually there's nobody in the world that knows what Anselm's done in real time other than Tim, and now Tim, and that's not flattery, it's just God has prepositioned his assets. I guess if you can sense I'm excited. What's happening, Sheila, is God is giving his followers the keys, and now after we get the keys, everyone is saying they have to now put their spin on it. So all the stuff they've tried to sit on until a later date is absolutely being, their hands are being forced, saying that, we are dependent upon the sales of our DVDs to basically fund our next expedition, which number four is underway. But, you know, I, I want to make this clear to people. We have to do this stuff on a shoestring budget. And yet the most powerful, wealthy individuals, both in, uh, on Earth and their, uh, you know, fallen angel control mechanisms that control the money of the world, are out there, you know, doing everything they can to confuse us. Now, greater is he who's in us than they who are in the world. And so we're putting this out there. Those of you who are older in age who have established, you know, pretty much your life and you don't have heirs or anything, and you know that God is going to raise up a team of people, I just encourage you to pray to see if you if God's asking you to come along aboard with it. If it weren't for one man and his wife who basically sought God and God said, help these guys out financially, this whole thing would have never happened. So saying that, if you can't see the hand of the living God, even as a believer, that we're being placed strategically at the right place at the right time, that what's a chance of, uh, and I call, and I do this out of respect, but I call Tim, Jungle Tim, a guy that basically lived in the Amazon for 10 years. Now we're in Peru, you know, obviously the Amazon is uh, on the other side of the mountains, but we're meeting with the whole unfolding, Sheila, of that which has been hidden. In essence, people, we're, we're not just quoting the scripture, Daniel. What we're saying is that which has been sealed up to the end is being unsealed. And if that doesn't get people excited, I don't know what does, because again, God is in the forefront. If Satan get thee behind me, not we follow behind the devil. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Well, what I find so disturbing is really the convergence, the coalescence of so many things here. Think about this. Why in 2017, why this year, the regurgitating of all things esoteric in Peru? The Lost City of Giants theme stories from five, six, seven years ago, they're resurfacing again. Peru, the lost city of giants, you know, promulgating this narrative. It's the most important discovery of the 21st century. And then as you touched on, Steve, this Peruvian lady, Keo, the ancient ruling Peruvian priestess who they found her body, her mummified body way back in 2005. Why are they just doing a 3D mock-up of her now? It's not just disturbing the reviving, the revival of all these ancient deities and gods and goddesses on the heels of all these also ancient pagan festivals going on like this one in Peru. You throw in the three-fingered mummy. I mean, come on, Tim, this is all just a little too convenient of a a setup, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's it's um, there. The, the, it seems like they're revi reviving ancient paganism all over the earth and the worship of the ancient gods uh, in Peru. The the Inti Raimi festival that they're doing, where they where they worship the god Inti, the the sun god. Um, this is a phenomenon that's happening, and it's it's increasing across the earth. I think that there's just a general rise in paganism. I think it's a sign of the times in which we live. 
um, and it's 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 rising up across the earth as a as an enemy of the gospel. And um, I think it's going to culminate in a one world religion, which will have the facade of Christianity, but at its heart will be pagan. And I think that's what we're seeing. And there's a lot of interest from people who are um, tired of uh, tired of traditional mainstream religions. Yeah. So I think it's just a uh, it's it's a sign of the times. And and I think we're we're on the cusp of uh, some very, uh, some very important revelations that are going to shock the earth. Um, at some point in time, it will be revealed that human beings are not the only sentient entities inhabiting the earth. And I think that we're going to find out in the coming years that there are a host of entities residing beneath our feet in the underworld. And when I say the underworld, I'm not necessarily talking about hell. I'm talking about the Shinkana, the global uh, labyrinth beneath our feet, the subterranean labyrinth. Um, there's a lot of legends and myths concerning concerning cities, entire cities that have been constructed beneath the surface of the earth. I think there's a lot going on. There's a lot of movement happening um, in terms of these these non-human entities that are basically preparing for the great deception that's coming in the future. And I think that's what a lot of this has to do with this. If this if this mummy turns out to be, let's just say this: if this mummy that that they found in Nazca the three-fingered mummy, turns out to be legitimate, then what we have is the first acknowledged discovery of a non-human species, sentient species, on the Earth. And if that is the case, that will rewrite history. Mm. And it will kick off the Great Deception. Uh, because, of course, it's going to be hailed as an alien species, and and that's going to open the can for all kinds of stuff. And it, I find it interesting that it's Gaia TV. Um, involved in this because Gaia TV is obviously it's a, it's a new age channel. It's an explicitly new age channel, and so their take on this is certainly not going to be a biblical narrative. It's going to be a, uh, in fact, it's going to be pagan. Is what their is, is in fact is what their entire channel is all about. It's about the exactly what I was just saying: the ancient paganism, Druidism, and all kinds of ancient uh, religious content that you'll find on, especially ancient ancient Eastern religious content you'll find on Gaia TV. So I find that very interesting. We don't know what's what's going to come of this thing, but and they're being very careful to their credit. The people at Gaia TV are being very very careful with this thing. They're not saying it's they're saying it could be a hoax right off the bat. So, but if it's not, get ready because. Because there's a lot more than just three-fingered little mummies out there. Yeah, very well said, Tim. Well, and you'll find this interesting. Speaking of absolute revival of paganism, the metaphysical and esoteric and occult onslaught in this new movie, Transformers, which I watched over the weekend, and I was absolutely stunned. I mean, not just the Saturn worship, the whole occult overtones, but Stonehenge was a pivotal part of opening something in the movie, Stargates and Stonehenge. And our, our kids are getting a steady diet of these, these helly weird, big blockbuster productions that are just absolute straight out of the pit of hell itself. I'm telling you, we're just getting a steady diet of all this evil, Steve. Well, we are, Sheila, and I want to just touch on the goddess worship that Tim brought forth on the Peruvian mummy, you know, 1,700 years old. Here is where I differ, and uh, not differ with Tim, but differ with almost everybody in the world of contemporary Christendom. When these hybrids were produced, fallen angels having sex with not only women, earth women, but also animals, there was a spirit, there was a combination, a hybrid spirit, which became the disembodied spirits, daimon or demon, the Greek word daimonitsumai, what happened to all those demons, okay? Demons don't die. They go into the lake of fire at some point in history, but they still, they go and walk. Jesus told us what happens to demons, okay? So what I'm saying is, is that there's an orchestrated background movement going on to bring about the reanimation of genetic material for the rehabilitation, if you will, or the repossession of the original evil spirit. In other words, understand if uh, the, the extractable DNA of Adolf Hitler, Stalin, Mao, Genghis Khan, Nimrod, you name any uh, entity in history, those evil spirits are looking for a home. Jesus taught that. Now, it's kind of like Ray Kurzweil in his book, An Age of Spiritual Machines. The issue they're talking about is when machines reach sentience, in other words, self-awareness. Well, the idea to some, I've seen some really stupid stuff posted by supposed thinking people trying to claim that physical matter cannot be 
animated by spiritual entities. Simply not true. We know even from the book of Revelation that there's going to be an image of a beast given life to, okay? Inferring that it didn't have life until something entered into it. So what I'm really trying to get people to understand is that when you say, Sheila, there's more to it, I think that here is the bottom line. The deception will be so great that except for the Lord absolutely intervening through the outpouring of his Holy Spirit, everybody will buy the lie. It's going to be so great. And I want to share something. It's incredibly frustrating because we got, we got pirates out there on YouTube and other places claiming that they're believers and that they're stealing our stuff, they're uploading it, and then we got to file copyright complaints yeah. and everything. But let me just make it real simple. We're fighting against, not against just flesh and blood and jerks, okay? I, I know Paul didn't throw that in there. Sometimes I just put it in my own mind. But the point <laughs> being is, is that when the people go to that and, and then they complain that, well, we're just out to make money, we use the money seriously to basically put into each one of the next DVDs. The one that's underway, I won't even say where now, multiple places in the world, it's going to be twice as expensive. But at the end of the day, Sheila, we get so many thank yous, you know, from people that are saying thank you. You put it into perspective. The Bible comes alive. I understand spiritual warfare. I understand the whole fallen angel thing. I understand Genesis 6 versus the people that send me emails saying, well, what do you say about the sons of Seth? The sons of Seth do not. Everything created in the book of Genesis was after its likeness and kind. You're talking about something that's not after a likeness and kind when you're talking about some form of interdimensional, spiritually physical mutation. So we're in a place now, I'd say the threshold, and I don't believe it's what's going to be revealed. I believe it's all being revealed at once. I don't think they can keep their finger uh, on all the holes in the dikes that are breaking. In other words, it's God's time to let his people know exactly the amount of lies they have believed. And you've got Christians now, and, and you know, when Tom Horn wrote the book Blood on the Altar, you've got Christians that are in favor of transhumanism. To be in favor of transhumanism is to say God made a mistake and that redemption no longer matters because mankind can achieve, if you will, godhood apart from the salvation in Jesus Christ. I, I don't think... And, Tim, you know, obviously what we're seeing are people that can't put two and two together because they don't recognize that their eternal souls are at stake, but also that they will use, the enemy will use everything within his power and finances to fake things. So, Sheila, again, we're just making a plea for people who can make a difference, who have the wherewithal. I'm not talking about, I'm not asking for anybody that can't afford anything, but for somebody to step up to the plate and understand. And I pray that God will take the veil off of someone's eyes that can say, I finally see what these guys are up against. Because, look, we have a lot of well-meaning guys. We had one guy that, you know, wants to give us so much money, but the problem is, is he wants us to give him money first. It doesn't work that way. When God does something, he does it with no strings attached. So we just pray that people will grasp this. And, and where are we? We're in Peru. Where were we? We're at Machu Picchu. We're at, obviously, uh, uh, Ojante Tambo. We're talking about empires built on the previous cyclopean architecture of the civilization of giants. We're talking pre-flood architecture. And, and for the record, Tim, I'll let you address this. You don't have to name unless you want. But the people in secular TV have painted themselves into an alien this, alien that corner, and they're now calling Tim, they're now calling Tom Horn, uh, you know, Tom Horn's going to be interviewed, I won't say by who, but the same people that called Tim, they can't get themselves out of the alien box, nor can they account for everything, alien this, alien that. Sooner or later, they're going to have to just say, look, it's in the Bible, but we don't want to believe it because we don't like God and we don't like Jesus. But they can no longer hide what the biblical presentation of truth, of reality, and of the origin of good and evil and technology is all about. Go ahead, Tim. It's interesting because um, Tom's going out there to meet with the History Channel with one of the guys that was in our last film. And um, I, was, I was actually contacted and have been contacted in the last year by not only the History Channel, but by um, agencies that work with the Discovery Channel and, and other channels. And um, they had some proposals they wanted to offer me and they wanted to talk about 
even doing some kind of a joint project with Gen 6 Productions. And uh, I was I was made aware of the fact that they're watching us and that uh, our our films have 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 basically uh, caught their attention. And so I find it interesting that that we're out here doing what we're doing, traveling all, all over the place, looking for giants, looking for stargates, all everything that has to do with the Genesis 6 narrative. And um, we're doing it with this desire to uh, expose the truth and and uh, and combat the lies. And and here we're being watched by these by these massive companies that in, in people's minds are on the cutting edge of this kind of information. So um Definitely, what Steve said, you know, and what Steve always says concerning the fact that we're we're moving providentially. We God places us at the right place at the right time all the time, and we see it happening over and over again. And we're becoming somewhat of the of the trendsetters in terms of the places we go and the things that we look at. In our wake, things start to pop up behind us. Even uh, the interest, as I said, from the from the different main channels the different uh, agencies that work with the with the big with the big boys basically on TV so that's encouraging to me because not only are we being watched and listened to by probably the NSA and a bunch of other entities the Vatican and whoever else um, but but there's a lot of interest by these channels and these in these agencies these these film agencies out there because we are on the cutting edge, tracking this stuff down. And we're on the cutting edge because that's where God put us. We're not there because me and Steve are so great. And I mean, a lot of this stuff just kind of falls into our lap and God ordains this and we just sort of walk into it. But it's, this is for those who have not seen the unholy sea and the Holocaust of giants, episode two and three, I highly encourage you to go see those films. You can see them at true legends, the series.com. You can access the films in their DVD, Blu-ray or online streaming formats right from truelegendstheseries.com, because we're following a thread here through these films that uh, the, the kind of information that we're laying out is proprietary. It's new information. We're not just rehashing old information. So I encourage people who have not seen these films to go see them, especially episode two and three, The Unholy Sea, and then the and then uh, Holocaust of Giants, our latest film. There's, there's information in Holocaust of Giants. There's puzzle pieces that uh, we provide in that film that I don't think have ever been considered before concerning the giants, concerning the um, the Canaanites, and, and, and certainly concerning the island of Sardinia. So I just encourage everybody to go take a look at those films, truelegendsofseries.com. Go ahead, Steve. Well, I, I would also encourage people to start looking at the events coming. You know, Sheila, one of the things that uh, has been amazing to me, and this is critical for people to understand, Tim made a great statement. Both of us have a central theme in what God's called us together to do is that a man has nothing except he receive it from above. Tim didn't spend his life on YouTube, and neither did I, trying to get other people's stuff to put our names on it after the fact, you know, sometimes 10, 15, 20 years. As a matter of fact, I think you, you've heard me say this, if, if it wasn't for Rhonda tracking down, there were over 145,000 pirated Steve Quayle things on the Internet at one point, and, uh, you know, that's why I was forced to basically get my own YouTube channel just because there were so many people putting so much raunchy stuff up on it, you know, and just not only that, but you see, somehow people don't understand something. The orchestration of the most evil entities that the Bible has defined as existing, that's what we fight against. And we fight against it not only external to us, but we fight against it also in relationship to, I would say, this well-meaning, maybe evil-meaning people that are claimants to Christianity that have never won anybody to the Lord Jesus in their life. And then they quote to me that scripture, well, it's not of uh, works, lest any man should boast about salvation. This has nothing to do with salvation. It has everything to do with the fruit of salvation. You know, my pet peeve, you know what it is, I've said it on every talk show I've been on, is the Christians are so cowardly, the majority, that they won't even name the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. The name Christ is his title. His name is Jesus. And the blood of Jesus is different than the sangre de Cristo or the blood of Christ. It's the same thing, but it's a personal uh, Savior's blood versus the concept of of, uh, you know, of the blood of uh, Christ. We saw that in the, uh, the Corte Concha. I, I wish I could tell all God's people. Somebody said, what would you tell all God's people if you had their ear for 30 seconds? 
I said I could do it in five. Go tell everyone Jesus is risen and he's coming back again. That may be more than five seconds. But again, the thing that's important is, is that why this relates to what we're talking about today. The truth. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. That obviously applies to salvation. It obviously applies to uh, Christian doctrine the whole realm of the revelation of God to his people through the Holy Bible. But it, it also says this, that if the whole world lies in the evil one, which the scripture is very clear on, then all of the knowledge, everything is a lie. And so, you know, when we're talking about this stuff, look, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing our homework on a basis that's unheard of. Tim literally was 18 hours a day for pretty close to six months, no exaggeration. And so we both have a compassion, if you will, to to let people know this. Look, there's another side of the story. So when we were in the desert southwest talking about this, the world's biggest stargate, being in uh, Peru at um, Sacsayhuaman, the thing that's important is this, is that if, if those gates are being identified, then go the next logical step. God's identifying them to tell everybody, get set for what's going to come through them. You see, I think everybody thinks this term, you know, men's hearts failing them for fear of looking after those things coming upon the earth. I think they think that's just basically chatter, okay? But when you understand the magnitude of what's going on, that it's like everything that God had put boundaries on or boundaries over uh, to protect mankind, the very nature of the devil is to get mankind to use that delegated authority that man was created with initially to basically help him come and conquer the very mankind that God meant that would rule the earth. Satan couldn't handle that. So this is, if you will, it's a question of kingdoms. And so the kingdom of darkness is being exposed. As the kingdom of darkness gets exposed, it will not outshine the light. So what we're saying is, listen, for those of you again who can, I'm tired because, listen, we could go at 2,000 miles an hour instead of 1,000 miles an hour if we had the right people. And, Tim, is this an understatement? We have guys that want to help us. We have people, and God bless them all. But that doesn't buy plane tickets for a film crew to, you know, the outer Mongolia or Romania or Bulgaria or the South Pacific. So the thing is, is that I appreciate that. But And, and then cover us with prayer, too, ladies and gentlemen, because it's so apparent that the evil of this thing is supernatural. So, again, Sheila, boils down to this. All of the mummies being found, all of the uh, genetic material of these ancient, uh, whether it's a dinosaurs or cryptozoological anomalies, somebody intends to do something with that DNA. And even last, uh, what, two days ago, it was announced that they're even figuring out how to teleport, i.e. Star Trek organic material, that you can you could send a DNA blueprint someplace in the world, and that, that entity could be created courtesy of, uh, you know, the uh, death net. So the point being is, is that when I wrote about this stuff, and I did in Genetic Armageddon, you know how that went over with everybody who denies everything that's truth and then basically tries to say they knew it all along? The point is, is that now we're in a, a realm that is beyond anything. I, I am saying this, unless God enables our speech to keep up in context, in description, it's almost indescribable. It's very difficult to communicate because when we're experiencing this stuff, and we will communicate because obviously God's given us the calling and the ability, but the best way to do it is on film and through a DVD because you can count in the thousands people that have sent us emails saying, ah, I have my aha moment when they finally get it, and that's our goal. Go ahead, Tim. Sheila? Well, and Steve, that ties back into the importance of, because this is a biblical narrative, they it's almost laughable how much these groups avoid that, like the plague. But with this culmination, Tim, this convergence, this coalescence of all these gods and goddesses and the paganism and everything that's going on, the discovery of perhaps a new groundbreaking, like you said, rewriting of history, a new creature, you know, cannibalism, blood sacrifice, that's the order of the day, along with all these weird, ancient, occult ceremonies everywhere. You know, it's not bad enough. We've got Shiva, the destroyer over there at CERN, getting ready to kick off the cosmic dance of death with a whopping six trillion electron volts. What are they really doing over there? I guess all of this really points to, Tim, this reeks of a setup. Yeah, it does. And and like I was saying earlier, it's it's paganism is on the rise. And 
And uh, there's a reason for that. And um, disclosure is coming. That's what becomes evident to me more and more every day. Disclosure is coming. There's not a day that goes by that you you can't go to one of the major um, news websites, websites uh, whether it be Fox News or CNN or, or ABC, where you don't find some kind of an article on the front page concerning aliens, concerning some kind of a new uh, discovery on Mars, or concerning some kind of a discovery, uh, strange discovery uh, on the Earth, such as that this Nazca mummy. Every single day. Uh, stuff is is uh, appearing on these uh, in the news, and it used to be that the mainstream news would would never report UFO type stuff. It was always a joke. Uh, everybody would just laugh about it, and mock it. That's not the case anymore. Something has changed. It's no longer being reported, whether it be UFO sightings or whatever. It's no longer being uh, reported in, in, in a mocking tone. It's, it's, it's beginning to be reported as uh, these kinds of things, this kind of phenomenon, as a very serious matter. And there's a reason for that. We're getting very, very close to some kind of disclosure, whether it be some kind of alien disclosure concerning Mars. And I do believe that that at some point in time in the future, there's going to be a major announcement concerning Mars. And it will probably coincide with something, some kind of an ancient discovery on the Earth, whether it be um, this mummy or something else, this three-fingered mummy or something else. It's inevitable. Something is coming. And and the, the, the further along we get here in time, the closer uh, the hour is approaching when this massive revelation is going to take place. And I think that the Vatican, that the Pope is going to be at the center of it. And uh, in fact, many of the power players across the earth are already prepping for it. And, and I think we've always known that that kind of disclosure is coming in the future, but we're getting really, really, really close. And so I would expect that as we get closer, that paganism is going to rise, that violence and that the, the turmoil on the earth is going to reach a peak, because I think that what's going to happen is we're going to get to a place on the earth where we're in big trouble, where it's going to be chaos and it's going to be blood and smoke and and it's going to be code red type situation on the earth where we can't fix it anymore a fukushima type situation and then suddenly there's this revelation and the saviors come the alien saviors or some kind of ancient species that that's been living under the earth something along those lines uh, is going to happen and it's going to happen i think um Pretty soon. And I don't know what pretty soon means in terms of the time frame, but I have a feeling I'll see it in my lifetime. And it's all converging. We're, right now we're, on a con we're, we're converging. Everything is converging towards that moment, that reality. And um, that's what's standing out to me, Sheila, more than anything. When I look at this paganism, when I look at the ancient religions, the ancient cults, the sun cults, the, the worship of the sun and the serpent, which is surging in the earth, even the 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 Babylonian mysteries, um, they, they, they wanted to put those, uh, those gates a year ago or so, the Arch of Baal uh, in every major city. It, it's, there's a reason for all of this. It's because we're getting really close to something and everything is, is, uh, is ramping up. And it's, believe me, when, when, when we get to that point of disclosure, whatever comes forth, one thing we, we can know for sure, it will be an enemy to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we know for sure. It will be an it will be adversarial to the gospel and to the people of God. Oh, absolutely. Steve? Well, yeah. Let me give you a headline. It's both in your inboxes immediately. Emmanuel Bonaparte, Macron declares he will govern like a Roman god. That is the French president, Emmanuel Macron. Wow. Now, let me ask you this, and this is right in the headline, Sheila, it's in your inbox, Tim, it's in your inbox. When you see that, I will exalt myself amongst the stars of heaven. I will be like the most high God. There's something going on. I wanna, I've talked about it over the years, but to be honest with you, I think it was too far ahead of its time. And, you know, is that outpicturing is taking place. That means that where there was a form of self-control and the entities that inhabit people like the, the French president or the former entity in the White House, the abomination of desolation, the thing is, is that these things can no longer control their containment. And it is my contention, Sheila, that many of these people that are world leaders 
are fallen angels. Now, one thing that people have got to understand, fallen angels can take on the form of human beings. The Apostle Paul said they can even manifest themselves as angels of light. Even the God's angels, holy angels, many times have taken on human form to help out and then to disappear. And the scripture tells us, for many have entertained angels unaware. The outpicturing is accelerating. The outpicturing is accelerating. I'm saying this three times for a reason. The outpicturing is accelerating. The idea simply being this, that due to all of the messing around with time and space and the quantum mechanics of CERN, the different levels of subatomic particles, the spirit world now coming into clear vision, they cannot control it. Now, I want to say something, too, about Mars. I'm going to be presenting at Branson my findings on Mars. And the late David Flynn, who basically wrote in his book, Cydonia, the Secret Chronicle of Mars, that I published almost, what, 15, 17 years ago, and I am the publisher on that, is going to become so more relevant than anyone could even imagine. Now, what's What's important, and this is really, I guess, critical, when the book that Tom Horn and I put out about Cloud Eaters, you know, the one that's currently available on my website and available on Tom's website, Cloud Eaters is the name of giants given by the Native Americans. When you looked up at them, they were so tall, their heads were in the clouds. They actually had one guy. I don't know. He didn't eat his Wheaties for breakfast, but the deal is, is thought I was saying that they were thousands of feet tall. I said, no. I said, come on, man. If you're, if you're looking up, a little kid that looks up at his dad, you know, when he's a toddler, and his dad is in front of a cloud, he's going to look like his head is in the clouds. Well, to make a long story short, I wrote the first part of that book, and it's dealing with the angelic civilization. It's t dealing with the time before the creation of man. And what we're going to do at Branson, I'll just be blunt, I'm going to break stuff at Branson I've sat on for a long time. It goes along with what Tim said, it's time. It goes along with Anselm said, it's time. And it's going along with what God has spoken to my heart. Sheila, you know, for someone who's been, please, I'm just stating this for the record. For 25 years on talk radio and talking about stuff that people didn't even believe in or even acknowledge 25 years ago or thought that, you know, I needed a one-way trip to a tinfoil hat factory, now they can't deny it. So where do we go? We go to preparing the people of God. And Henry Groover and Pastor Langford will be at uh, Branson. This is going to be televised, and, and I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a powerful, powerful, powerful meeting because from the beginning of Derek Gilbert's inception, obviously uh, we're going to have uh, Tim and Anselm talking about all of their, uh, I, I guess you'd say, almost interlocking discoveries and the understanding that God has given them. You're going to have Tom Horn speaking on the whole uh, uh, thing that most people, when I talked about it 25 years ago, this isn't about that I talked about. This is about 25 years ago. No one, apart from the Spirit of God and the grace of God, could have known that cannibalism would be the headlines of the day. Now what are we finding? We're finding the graveyard of skulls, the Tower of Skulls, ritual cannibalism. And there's this whitewashing of the greatest, uh, well, not great by uh, morally, but the, some of the biggest civilizations in the world that were nothing more than cannibal, human sacrifice, giant offspring or basically worshiping the giants and the slaughter and the reason why some of these guys disappeared overnight is God said enough now what when God says enough it's enough and many of those people fled they it's, I've heard people say well they disappeared almost as they disappeared overnight i.e. the tunnels hello and most of them came into the desert southwest you have Incan Incan architecture at Chaco Canyon you have the influence of Aztec uh, architecture in New Mexico. You've got the gruesome ritual magic that opened up the portals of the Anasazi, the ancient ones, the alien ones, and they ate them up. Man, we got we got so much flack because people that agreed to go on camera with us, you know, during Holocaust of Giants, they wouldn't do it because of our biblical position and because they got sat on. See, they've always tried to state that, uh, you know, the, the desert southwest Native Americans were, uh, you know, basically agrarian farmers. Well, they were until the portals opened up, and guess what? After that, it was a cannibalistic culture and many of the Native Americans
Americans were eaten, literally eaten out of existence. Not that the earthly food wasn't there, they got consumed. Uh, Numbers 13, 32, and 33, Joshua and Caleb. The greatest discovery in a Holocaust of giants, and I, I, I still don't think people get this, Tim, is when you basically found the inscription in, uh, uh, where is it, Tunisia, uh, uh, about they, the giants fled. Go ahead and tell that story. This is critical to what we're saying. The giants all over the world, Sheila, came from Sardinia, which was their jumping off point. Well, that was in uh, near the city of Tangier, in the ancient city of, of Tingis or Tingis. Uh, there was a, there was an, it's, some historians recorded an, an inscription that was uh, left on some pillars there by the Phoenicians, uh, which read something to the effect, uh, we are those who fled before the face of Joshua the robber. And, uh, of course, referencing the fact that Joshua drove the Canaanites out of Canaan, and among the Canaanites were races of giants, famously. And uh, in Holocaust of Giants, we trace the... Uh, the expulsion of the Canaanites primarily to the island of Sardinia and then from there throughout the earth. And that's a very important fact when considering how the seed of the of the Rephaim was distributed all over the earth. And that's how it was done. It was done through the Phoenicians, i.e. through the Canaanites, who became, who were called the Phoenicians by the Greeks, became the greatest seafarers and consequently also the greatest masons on the earth. Solomon actually empo- employed the Phoenicians in the building of the temple. So it's a very interesting, um, it's a very interesting expose on the on uh, the post-flood giants, and especially on the island of Sardinia, the Phoenicians, the Canaanites, and everything associated with those post-flood giants. I think the information is going to be absolutely incredible, what you're presenting in Branson this fall. Tom Horns hinted that this is going to be his last conference. So why should you find a way to get out here? Because it's such an incredible melding of amazing speakers. But, you know, there's also something to be said for you cannot put a price on meeting like-minded Christians I don't think there's going to be anything like this, Steve, ever. No, I, and I'll be blunt with you, you know. Uh, Tim, is he's he's been raised up. Whether he decides to do another one, that's his call. I doubt you'll get Tom Horn and I at another conference together. Tom is retiring from conferences. Uh, he's he's fulfilling the, the dream of his heart for... You know, basically having a a retreat for uh, underprivileged children from all over the country. Uh, He's he's stepping into the background. Obviously, I'm going full bore film producer, and Tim is obviously the director or writer. So, you know, I finally get to do what I graduated from college in 1974 to do, and that's to make movies. It's ironic. The thing is that we're going to have... amazing information from start to history but before history before genesis 1 1 and 1 2 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep those two scriptures launched me in the entire calling of my life leading to gen 6 what was before why would god who creates everything beautiful what happened between genesis 1 1 and 1 2 well obviously some people want to argue about pre-adamic stuff we don't i don't but there's two words pre-adam and pre-flood and there was angelic civilizations that were on earth the great civilizations i write about them i talk about them tim talks about them we write about them but the point Point B is people have got to understand we do our homework and they need to come to Branson, Missouri. You'll never have the, if you will, the theme of what's going on before the beginning, the beginning and the end and how it all plays out. Basically, I believe, I believe it's the key to understanding the padlock of the future. That's not a braggadocious claim. You can't have people brought from different uh, aspects of life to this specific location at this time, September uh, 15th, 16th and 17th to meet, to present this kind of information. doesn't mean the information won't exist. Obviously, it'll be on DVD. But for those of you that cannot attend, please go and sign up. What is it, Tim? Uh, True Legends of the Conference? No, it's yeah. uh, gen6conferences.com for those who want to register yeah. for the conference. And uh, we just opened it up for live streaming. And like Steve said before, this thing is almost packed, this this facility. It's in the mansion in Branson. It's a beautiful facility. Uh, it's where a lot of the country stars go uh, to, to play in Branson. We're about 85, 90% filled up in the actual seating. Uh, so if you want to be physically present at this 
this conference go and sign up today because those seats will be unavailable uh, shortly but there is live streaming and that's unlimited uh, so you can go uh, if you can't get seats at the actual conference uh, physical seats you can you can certainly watch uh, the conference in the comfort of your home that's available right now at gen6conferences.com and, and let me say Sheila that I know that Steve's got things that he's going to share in his presentation that he's never talked about publicly I know for a fact uh, that Anselm P. Rambla has some information that he's going to share for the first time that he's been holding um, that he, he told me that he's been holding this information and he didn't know when uh, he would present it but when we invited him to the conference he knew just like Steve said it was time because uh, there's some astounding information that Anselm P. Rambla has and he gave us a sampling of it in, in Cusco and it really is mind-blowing it's first class investigative information that's 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 going to be quite surprising I have things that I've been preparing and that I've been uh, uh, holding close to my chest too that I'm going to be sharing at the conference. Uh, I think this will be Tom Tom Horn's one of the last times that that you'll that you'll see Tom Horn at a conference, and perhaps the very last time that you'll see Tom and Steve together, which is a huge deal because these guys have been forerunners for years in this material. You know, so it's going it's going to be really really powerful, and it's not going to be like conferences that people are, are are used to dealing with this type of content. This is going to be different, and there's a number of reasons why it's going to be different. The venue itself is totally different than what people are used to uh, for a conference, and it's going to be very audio, visual heavy. I think it's. I think people are going to have a great time. They're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be very dynamic, and it's going to be powerful. I mean, we've got uh, we've got Henry Groover there, and and uh, Pastor Langford, and and so it's it's going to be very powerful. So if you can go, if you can if you can physically get there, I encourage people to go sign up immediately. If you can't, live stream it. Well, it's definitely shaping up to be the event of the year. I'm really excited to see you guys. It's going to be great. The fact that you're live streaming it is such an amazing option for people. I know there's we have listeners all over the world that are going to be very grateful to hear that news. And in the waiting moment, Steve, I'd like you to tell the folks, I mean, obviously you touched on something earlier, the James Camerons of the world, they have unlimited budgets to spew their lies. You guys are really, I think you're the only people doing this kind of work that are tying it back to the biblical narrative exclusively. You will never hear that on Ancient Aliens. Well, Satan makes sure his projects get funded. Tim and Steve, how can people get financially behind your incredibly, I think, very important work? Well, they can just uh, email me at steve777 at stevequail.com. Best way is an email because, again, I want people to understand that, you know. And here's what, we, what I want to make sure people understand, Sheila, is that we're, not, we're asking those who are able to. You know, if somebody sends me $10, I don't want that. I'm not asking for that because we've got to be launched. And it's not that your $10 isn't good enough, but I'd rather send you 100 than you send me 10 Somebody said, I'll take you up on that deal all along. No. Not, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is those people who are, so send me an email, steve777 at stevequail.com. Tim, do we have on our Gen 6 uh, Yes, I was, page, I was just going to uh, say, okay, go they ahead. can also go to truelegendstheseries.com. There's a support tab, support Gen 6 Productions, and people can support us right through the website via PayPal from some kind of a monthly uh, donation or one-time donation right there through PayPal on the website. So that is available at truelegendstheseries.com. Excellent. Well, you heard it there, folks. The conference to be at Steve Quayle, Tom Horn, Ellie Marzulli, Timothy Alvarino, Ansem Rombler, Michael Lake, Derek Gilbert, David Langford alone. There you go. You don't get better than that. And Henry Groover to put a cherry on top. It's always such a pleasure to have you both on the program. And I'll tell you, it's a, a very interesting what's going to happen in the fall as we get closer to this conference. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. Folks, that was Timothy Alberino and Steve Quayle from stevequayle.com. Of course, Gen 6, that's G-E-N-S-I-X, conferences.com is where you can pick up a ticket for this event. Like Tim said, it's filling up fast. It's 90% full. If you can get out there, get out. And, you know, one of the things you guys know is I've been really passionate about connecting people from other folks in their area. And you just never know who's going to be at this conference. You may forge 
a lifelong friendship. You might find people from your area. That to me is really exciting because you cannot put a price tag on fellowship with like-minded Christians and friendships that you solidify lifelong. 